Hey guys, welcome back to the Confirmant RM YouTube channel. Getting ourselves back into another you know, technicals video looking at Bitcoin, XRP, and such. And uh, I guess almost like clockwork, we were talking about the fact that, you know, we couldn't get ourselves back here in a parallel channel. Bitcoin not breaking through around that 43,000. You know, if we did, we were going to be expecting around that 43.9 to that you know, 44 again. But we were talking about the fact how we really needed to get through that ceiling. And unfortunately you can see it fell, came back for support on 42.5, lost it. And then the immediate plunge here to around that 41.2. And then it subsequently down there to 40,265, just about. Um, and we were even kind of discussing that over here, having that retrace. Cause we had talked about a video on Saturday night, uh, coming back down here and, and retesting again. But what we kind of got here on the Fibonacci would be, Let's see. So if we're going to continue onwards and see what's going on here with Bitcoin, we got the correction. We got that parallel channel downwards. You can see here exactly the width of the channel, you know, from the breaking point, even, you know, and we're going to say right here from the retest point, um, right almost to a T. So at the, at the moment you're looking at 40,000 as the floor, you can see that we double tapped it over here on December 11th. Uh, so nothing too, too crazy. But there's no warning signs unless we really get ourselves below 40,000. Uh, if we're going to wind up doing that, what we're going to wind up doing is taking a consistent floor, which I would say is more right here to the high here. The next point is it's quite large uh, if you do the large scale. But I think if we're going to go more short term, do local high to local low right here. So local high, I won't exclude the wicks. Uh, around 39,270. So it looks like that around 48.23 is going to be around our support here. Uh, and then subsequently around 42.10. And then we have uh, 39.273 on the table. But you can see at the moment we're kind of just adhering by, um, if we were to kind of adjust this, you know, go by tops of candles and tops of these candles, we can see that we could get up to here around like what, 42.372 before further correction. Um, but if we look here on the, on the MACD, you can see things are starting to shape up. We got pretty far oversold here. We haven't been that oversold since August 2019. Sorry, August 19th, 2023. I'm sorry about that. I was just seeing August 19, but okay. So we've got, you know, a good bottom out, you know, right here on the MACD. So, uh, you know, starting to come back up, got knocked back and now starting to come back positive. We can see right here uh, in the same course how things could look. So it looks like we might just be go trending sideways, getting up here and starting to, uh, to uh, maybe if I were to, you know, guesstimate maybe something more like that or if we're going to talk about something even crazier, maybe something sort of like this and getting ourselves to ascend for the week and then get ourselves a breakout up there to around, you know, 43,000. Nothing crazy, but at the moment, what we're going to want to see for Bitcoin is just really holding ourselves about 41,261 over the weekend. And, you know, if, if we wind up pushing back at all, but, uh, you know, we start to actually get the craziness and happiness back in break through um, the ceiling right here that we have. It's around at the moment uh, around $43,000, but you can see that it wasn't too, too crazy of a push on the downside here. You can see that, you know, here on the MACD, it, the, the volume wasn't absolutely terrible. And you can see here on the RSI, uh, we got ourselves to come back down, uh, double tap and now starting to move out. Um, same situation. We haven't been this, cr we've been this oversold here, you know, the 11th, we saw this on November 14th. So it, it lines up here on the RSI for a thought process. You can see it can be quite volatile after double doing double tap. Um, at least it did it a lot sooner in this correction. You can see these other ones took a little bit longer, but we did get that push down twice. So regardless, you know, just looking for the notion of just solidifying a ground and solidifying, um, I would say, uh, just stability because at the moment there's no cause for total concern at the moment because you know we're holding above this one you know realistically we really really wanted to hold above like 41 but you know we, we double tap down here in december so it was about time you know to fly up and then get our back test down and now we can kind of trend sideways for a little bit in this channel and then we can see ourselves you know progress throughout the the, the end of quarter one you know, in the quarter two, but for XRP, 
unfreaking fortunately, you know, we we can always sometimes you know exclude wicks. Or I, like for the moment, we come here to daily. We're on a daily chart. It looks like it's just wicking through, uh, you know, down to 52 support uh, and holding above 54, uh, eight. So we scroll back. Let's see, you know, the four hour chart shows it going through. And as you can see other time periods when the same things wound up happening and then you're still holding the support. So XRP isn't a cause for alarm yet. You know, we got the wick through, maybe we even get the, the, the wick through and we kind of close somewhat like right here on like 54, uh, eight or sorry, sorry, 53, eight to 54. But then, you know, it, it, it isn't something crazy. We're still holding uh, from the same price action we had here in October. We came back for a double, you know, back test. Because if we zoom out, you can see we threw, flew up to around 74, 75, came back down. And it looks like that. Look at that. It's just, just, just this overall trend we were talking about last just uh, last Saturday, you know, it's just adhering, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm expecting April, I'm expecting April. So now we can make our small, you know, turn around and kind of come back up here, um, kind of maybe come around the middle of the region, come back up, hit around 61, and then kind of just kind of neander for the, you know, the remainder of the next month and a half. But nothing crazy, absolutely nothing. You can see here, by the time we fell, that made exactly sense where we kind of fell corrected to and now are seeing our, our price hold above 54 because 54 is a strong strong support at the moment because of it continually having been a uh, rejection region and then the correction <laughs> so right now this is what we need to hold this is what we need to do and this is what we need to see uh same thing with bitcoin uh, i'm actually curious to see the dji at the moment dji is just still freaking going it's just ripping look at that another new high crazy on this daily the dji yeah, look at that right at that two two six one eight here on the short term and on the long term you know if we were actually really to blow through this you could see look at that that's uh the 2618 you know if it blows through that I, looking around 39,000 uh to 41,000 dji which this is what really controls the crypto market usually you see a bitcoin thing within six you know three to six months after seeing something like this but I'm hoping that we see something like this. Um, you know, uh, I, I have the profit taking from the DJI coming to crypto afterwards. Cause that's something we definitely need to see. I'm curious with ETH what we're seeing right now. What we're going to see with ETH. Let's see down to the bottom. Look at that. Ethereum hitting that 2618. Come back down for a little bit of support. Looks like it come. If you're looking at long term, three three thousand is the next target. But if we're gonna go short term, we'd grab our Fibonacci from this to the low here. You can see that support sitting there around twenty three hundred. But it's it's weird if you were to describe this. If we use candle bodies, maybe no. Yeah, actually, you could say candle bodies in twenty three ninety six, but twenty seven seventy two being the, there two six one eight. But Ethereum is still bullish regardless, even if it sits, uh, you know, around there that twenty three forty nine twenty three thirty. Uh, but this is all long term stuff you're talking about. But you can see right here, the volume for Ethereum is starting to come back down and go negative, you know, into the uh, the bearish territory. Um, so it might you know come back down and do that little split and kind of you know, hold on top of here, but you know, that could be what I, what would this be at this point? Like, it could be like a 6% drop, which would be quite significant to see, but Ethereum had quite the run too. If we grab ourselves here, let's see, I'm looking curious on the MACD hitting the seven. Okay. Uh, I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to wait on Ethereum. I'm definitely going to, I'm quite curious to see how it holds in this region. I'm going to see how it holds this, uh, three 2396, but you know, we don't care too too much about Ethereum on this channel, but it is definitely something worth noting, especially with the price action it's had um, over the course of just <laughs> this year, getting back up to twenty six, twenty seven hundred dollars. Definitely crazy. But all right, guys. Hope you guys are having a good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Appreciate every single one of you. Remember, it's just volatile. Everyone that said that they wanted to buy Bitcoin when it was up there around the that you know forty eight, forty nine, right there, forty eight three. You know, <laughs> now had their chance and has their chance to buy. Yesterday was definitely an interesting day for that, hitting that bottom. But hope you guys are having a good one, and I'll see you in the next one.